guys, L7 here. It's been a while uh, since I've originally planned this video, but I wanted to give it some time before I actually get this video out. This is more of like an overview video, and then I think I might do like a full-on video review at some point. Uh, but this here is a 2001 Ford Ranger. This is my vehicle. Uh, pretty old. Anyways, uh, I upgraded the radio towards the end of 2016. It is now March uh, 21st, so it's the second day of spring. And the weather is starting to look great. As you can see the snow is beginning to melt. Anyways, uh, here is the JVC KW V120BT. This is a double DIN uh, DVD player. It's an audio system for the vehicle. Now I'm going to show you guys the startup time. It's relatively fast. So you just press on. It says JVC. And then it starts up. Again, this is a 2001 Ford Ranger. Um, originally... I had this old radio, I didn't throw this out yet, this is the old radio, I'm going to show you a video clip of this in a moment. Alright guys, so here's the stock radio before the actual installation. Uh, again, this is a 2001 Ford Ranger, so this radio unit here is going to be uh, 16 years old, um, once we hit 2017 at some point. It's a, I mean, it's okay, it's really basic, uh, it's a 2001, there's no aux or any fancy features. As you guys can see, the volume dial is missing, and the main reason I want to replace this is because, like, the volume dial doesn't work, period. I was going to go with a basic, um, single DIN player that has, like, auxiliary and CD players, but then, you know, I found out they make, uh, DVD players and ones with, like, uh, all these good features, such as, like, navigation, uh, Android Play, Apple Play, and so on, so I'll just give you guys a quick demo. Um, just the main issue with this, uh, player here is the volume dial, so, we'll go to a CD, and, as you see, I'm, like, turning it up, and it goes down, and then backwards sometimes brings the volume up. It's pretty bipolar. Alright, let me switch stations. 7 a.m., counting down the top 99 songs of 2016. It's all being brought to you by Kicks USA. Then, the... Go to another station. I don't think commercials are copyrighted, so we should be okay with this. But uh, as you guys can see, I'm trying to turn up the volume. And it's just not going. It's really annoying. When you're just trying to listen to music. Back to your favorite R&B. Thing and accessories for guys and girls in their teens and twenties. Please. And then sometimes it just jumps all the way up. So, uh, one more thing I want to mention is that this is the size of a double din player. Uh, it's pretty large. Um, and I've checked uh, Crutchfield, uh, Sonic Electronics. Now Best Buy's auto department, and they all confirmed, I also looked on YouTube and I've seen other people install double DIN DVD players um, in a 2001 Ford Ranger. Again, the space here is pretty large, uh, but it's going to require a slight trim. So that's really the only um, part of the install that needs to get done. Could be a little complicated, but again, I'm taking it somewhere to get professionally installed since I don't have all the tools to do the job, uh, nor do I have the time myself to get it done. I, I guess you guys get the idea, it just it needs to get replaced. It's pretty annoying and um, it should be a nice upgrade. So this player here is 16 years old, I guess as of now, and uh, the volume dial didn't work. So I'll show you what exactly went on with that. Originally I was just going to get one of the basic MP3 audio systems, or I guess a single DIN. And they're pretty thin and small. It would have been an easy installation. I actually had to get this trimmed. Uh, now for you guys to like to give you guys a heads up so you guys don't ask me in the comment section. Uh, yes, this vehicle does require a slight trim, but this double din player fits just fine. So we're going to hit and go to the main menu here. And then uh, it's pretty advanced. Uh, I don't use my finger to uh, touch the system. I use a stylus. Anyway, so this thing has several apps. And again, it can play DVDs. It plays it in a 640 by 480 uh, p video resolution. Anyways, uh, several features here. We have home. There's AV off. I believe you can hook up uh, the old what are they called? RCA cables. There's the yellow cable, the yellow. Oops, the yellow cable, the white cable, and the red cable. Uh, yellow is for video, and white and red is for um, audio. So if you wanted to, because I've seen for some of these um, systems. Maybe not this one, uh, but I have seen people actually hook up game consoles to their vehicle, uh, which is pretty cool. So, 
um, there's an AV feature there. Uh, this does do rear view camera. I was going to get that installed, but <laughs> the whole installation process for that is way more expensive than just this. Um, now, talking about the installation process, I tried going to ANS installation. Um, it was a bit cheaper than Best Buy. Best Buy was ridiculous. They were booked for like two weeks solid. This, this job didn't take long, so I didn't go there either. I went to, um, Oh man, I, I can't remember offhand. Um, but I got it done for 80 bucks. It was an $80 job. And uh, he did the trim. Also, another thing about double DIN players is with the cable installation, usually when you set the vehicle to drive or reverse, uh, it'll shut off the DVD feature so you can't watch videos on the go. Uh, most people always get that wire like pinched or not connected, so it doesn't read that. So when you're on the go, the passenger can watch the uh, movie. Another thing, since it's spring now and going to be summer, uh, this display is pretty bright. Um, at night it looks great, and then during the daytime you can still see it fine. It's not like where you ever use like a cell phone and you pull it out in the middle of the day and you can't see the screen. You don't really have that issue also because uh, there's, some, there's some space in here. This double DIN player sits inside quite a bit. Unlike the old player, uh, this thing was sitting outside of it pretty far like out to like here so uh, going on with more of the apps um, like I mentioned there's rear view camera AV uh, so you can do a few things with that there's the now playing it'll just take you to whatever app is being used tuner is your radio and then you can set up all your stations and save them disc is for either your CDs or DVDs plays those fine you can play videos uh, and also mp3 type format songs off of the USB app here it is iPod friendly. Use an iPad, iPhone. Use it there uh, via the USB cable. There, Android is what I use because I have an Asus Zenfone 2 Laser. Uh, pretty good Android phone here. Anyways, uh, Bluetooth audio gives you like the most features. Uh, there's an AV in, which is what I was mentioning earlier about hooking up a console. Possibly, not too sure on that, but I know some people hook um, up extra devices to this and can do more with that. Um, there's an apps. I haven't really played around with this and Pandora is uh, like I don't really mess around with the apps. I haven't really played around with them too much but uh, if you press it it just says no video sing signal. Anyways, uh, so what I usually do is I have a USB cable in my vehicle at all times. Um, I plug in my phone and then I set the phone up here and play music off in this setup. It works pretty well. Um, just a heads up, if you guys are Android users by any chance, sorry about that. Uh, if we jump over to, um, I guess I would have to plug in the phone. Actually I don't have to. If I go to Android mode, uh, just a heads up for you guys, never put it on auto mode, keep it on audio mode. Um, auto mode can automatically sh sift or shift through the songs in your phone and then play them, which is convenient. Uh, but the issue is that this really only works, I believe, with like MP3, uh, WMA, AAC, and .wave type audio files. So if you run into the file type M4A, I believe is what it is, .m4a, uh, this will crash. <laughs> And then you got to restart it. So it's pretty annoying. Just leave it on audio mode and then go on your phone and turn on your music app. From there, you can control it uh, with your stylus or your finger and you control, can control it from here or you can control it from your phone. It's really convenient. Uh, another thing about this JVC KW V120BT is uh, it comes with a microphone, which is pretty awesome. You can make phone calls from your vehicle. Now, this only works if you have it set up via Bluetooth. Or you wirelessly hook up your phone, whether it be Android or iPhone, set it up here, and then you can use the phone app. Um, so here's the microphone. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the cable runs. The guy just did it for me. And um, the audio quality is stellar. One of my friends told me the audio quali quality from the vehicle is actually better than the audio on the Zenfone 2 Laser. So... The audio quality is really crisp and clear. It's not like a gimmicky sort of add-on. It works really nicely. Um, also, if you have like a newer car with uh, controls on the steering wheel, I don't have, like this is an older vehicle, so you won't have that. 
Uh, but we have a 2007, uh, what is it, uh, Toyota 4Runner that has uh, the onboard wheel controls and we also have a 2012 Hyundai Elantra Limited and that also comes with um, the controls on the wheel. I think pretty much any car after like 2006, 2007 will have those features. So um, just to get this up and going, I'm going to turn on Bluetooth and I got to be careful because of YouTube copyright. The audio quality is great. The interface is simple. Change stations. All right, so we have a commercial here. That's okay. Uh, this button takes us back home, or to the previous screen or app. Home button takes us home, obviously. FMC, uh, I read it in the manual. I don't remember what it does. I don't really ever use it. Volume controls, USB port, and then disc eject. So that's generally it for that. Um, and then, Thank you very much, sir. There's Android, which is again what I usually use plugged in uh, to charge my phone. And then Bluetooth audio, so you can go through your phone contacts and play uh, videos that are music that way. Um, so, yeah, that's about it for this JVC KWV uh, 120BT. I purchased this off of Amazon. I'm trying to remember how much it was. I got a deal, um, I got $50 off. But nowadays, I mean, it was only three months ago. These are generally going for about two hundred dollars to like two fifty. If you see them going for three hundred, don't bother. There's also a lot of versions of this. Um, so my best uh, piece of advice for you would be to check websites like Crutchfield. I think there was another one like Sonic Audio. Um, Crutchfield was really helpful. There's another website I used. I forget. I forget the name, but it tells you which players are compatible in each car. Because this uh, double DIN player will not fit in every vehicle. Um, some vehicles can only fit single DIN video players or just audio players. And then if you have a vehicle with more room here, you can fit one of these nicer uh, double DIN uh, players here. So that's about it. I mean, there, you get some customization options. You can change the wallpaper and such. Again, I plan on doing like a full on video review. But it's a really nice setup, uh, it wasn't too expensive, and it makes driving a lot more enjoyable because with the old system, um, as you guys saw in the video clip, the audio just skipped around, and there was no features, it was all old school, and I needed something new, it's 2017, so this seemed to do the job really well. I'm really happy with it. Uh, the only thing pretty lame, I guess, about this is it doesn't have any auxiliary which doesn't really matter because you get the Android app, uh, you get the iPod app for iPhone, and then you can also do it via Bluetooth, so you don't really need it. It's just trying to go all wireless, I suppose. And then, also if you plug it in USB-wise, uh, you get to charge your device, so it's, it's really not an issue. But uh, that might be an issue for some people. It doesn't matter to me. So, I hope um, this was pretty insightful for you guys. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can do a full-on video review of this product. Again, uh, I guess I should just go over a little more specs here, since I have a little cheat sheet. Um, so yeah, it charges your devices pretty fast. Uh, for video, it can do uh, w or MPEG-1 and MPEG-2, so not really that many formats. Again, audio, MP3, WMA, AAC, WAV. And for photos, like changing up your wallpaper, it only accepts uh, JPEG or JPEGs. Uh, so that's about all of that. Um, I guess I could show you guys the options. There's quite a few settings in here. And it's actually on the home screen. So you get a lot of things. Um, this is, a, again, a Ford Ranger, so it's a truck. But you can change up how the audio pumps out the vehicle. And then um, you can change up the clock, obviously. Uh, you can customize your home screen, adjust this, uh, do the video output. You're going to obviously use this if you're in America, PAL for like Europe. Um, this is where you enter your rear view camera. I don't know how navigation works. Um, I thought like originally this wasn't um, like having like. Google Maps. I saw a Sony one that accepted Google Maps and the thing that iPhones use. Uh, whenever I use Google Maps, it just sits up here on the smartphone, so I don't really ever use that. And then more system settings and uh, things like that. So, again, overall, really great purchase. Um, if 
you guys are going to purchase a double dune player, you will need a harness. Uh, this was like 8 bucks on Amazon, so don't go to Best Buy because they tried to charge me triple the price of this. The installation price was ridiculous. Um, just check locally. The guy I found was great. Um, I'll find the car shop's name and I'll put it in the video description. Alright, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for checking it out. This is AL7, signing out. Yeah.